Hey everybody, welcome back to Tens of Motorsports. Today is gonna to be a big, well I say today, it's gonna to be several days for me, but it's gonna be a big video. We are gonna be doing some max speeding rod reinforcement plates. These are just metal plates that go onto your sub, well in between your subframe and the body of the car to reinforce it, make it stronger and keep uh, your subframe from ripping out from underneath the car. And we'll go over that in just a moment. Before we do, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of content. Also make sure to follow us on Instagram. We do giveaways, Tenza underscore motorsports. We just got done with a giveaway and there are more to come. Just be following us, Tenza underscore motorsports on Instagram. Both cars need this. I have two sets. I've got one that I already opened up and I wiped off. I think it's, it kind of reminds you of like Cosmoline, smells like Cosmoline. It's basically just an oil to keep uh, the metal plates from rusting while they're being stored or shipped. And yeah, like I said, both cars need it. My car, I think needs it slightly more. We're gonna go underneath there and I'm gonna show you what's going on with mine. I did cut the spare tire well out and I have a lot of people that are like, oh, have you done the, the reinforcement plates and the reinforcement plates? And I know the E46s have subframe issues, but I've never come across one. Never had any issues. Uh, the M3 didn't have any cracking. So anyways, we're going to unbox this, show off what it comes with and then I'm dropping the rear subframe out of the car, which is a fairly large project. It's not anything small. I think the biggest pain in the butt is the fact that you're gonna have to uh, get yourself in alignment. The other thing that's happening in this video, it, it might not be shown on this video, but the other thing that's happening while the rear end is out, I'm gonna drop the fuel tank. Uh, I'm getting a fuel cell and I'm gonna be finished running the, the Evil Energy lines through this. That was a previous video, I'll have that linked up here. Uh, that was the last video we did and I want to run the lines. I didn't want to permanently mount the lines running underneath the tank because I need to have them up against the body of the car. And so I just kind of draped them underneath and, and I'll move them out of the way, drop the fuel tank. I've also got a, a Mason rear reinforcement bar. And so I might be getting that set up. <laughs> so there's a lot of things that need to happen to the back of this car. And uh, I'm not, I'm not really looking forward to a lot of them. So let's get them opened up. I'll show what is going on with everything and we'll get the rear subframe dropped out of this car. All right, so these are the two subframe reinforcement kits. I'll open this one up, kind of show what they look like and we'll go over all of the parts and pieces and how everything goes together. Uh, you do have to weld these on. I've seen people glue them. I don't know how much I agree with the gluing parts. I mean, I guess it's better than nothing, but preferably you'd weld them. You do not have to do a 360 degree weld. You can. You can tack weld it all up there and uh, just get it so it's not going to move or anything like that. And that's what worries me about glue is if it's flexing at all, that glue could crack and then you just have a, you might as well have just sandwiched the plate in there. Uh, with even just a few tack welds, it's probably better than glue. I, slapping a couple rivets in here would be better than glue. I don't know if you've got room to fit rivets, but that's just my opinion on it. So it's packaged real nice. They do that foam fitting stuff. Not that these are gonna bend, they are relatively thick. And so that's how it comes. And uh, where these are all dirty, I will now swap over to the other box and show off some of the plates we've got here. So they send us two plates, basically the same size. You've got these two here. Got this larger one here with three holes in it. You have another larger one, three holes. It is slightly different than this one. So those are not the same. And then you have these two here, which are mirrored. All right, so unfortunately, a lot of this video is gonna be recorded on my GoPro. So uh, a lot of the audio and maybe even some of the visuals won't be the highest quality, but getting underneath the car with my nice cameras is not a very good idea. And uh, I just apologize right off the bat because the lighting and the angles and things like that are gonna be kind of difficult to show what's going on. I'm not necessarily gonna show how to drop the rear end. It's pretty simple. There's a ton of videos on how to do it. The worst part, on my car anyways, is just dropping the exhaust, uh, trying to find a way to get that out of the way without taking too much space in the garage. I'm going to be blocking the front wheels 
and then lifting up the back. I was thinking about lifting up the entire car, which I can do. The only downside to that is that when you have it lifted like this, uh, I do get a little bit more space in the back of the car. And so I think I'm going to, like I said, block the front and lift the back. So that's what we're gonna be doing right now. Get it up off the ground. And then um, I want to go through, I mean, I've got a fiber wheel. I'll go through and clean up all of the undercoating on the bottom of the car and expose if there's, see if there's any cracks. Big project, kind of nervous about getting it done this weekend, but uh, let's see what we can do. All right, here we are with the rear end complete out of the car. So over here is that crack and that's a fairly common spot. So what we do to fix these is you'll drill a hole at the end of the crack and you'll drill a hole at the end of this side. And that way, um, because it's, it's circular, it's no longer going to, it can't continue to crack any further. So I'll drill holes on each side and then um, I'm gonna clean off the undercoating, make sure there's no like hairline cracks and then we'll start welding. All right, fuel tank is out. I don't know if that's a standard thing to do, but I would assume welding this close. I mean, the tank was like sitting like right here. So I would assume that's a bad idea to do that. Uh, like I said earlier, we we're going to be doing a fuel cell in the car. So that needed to come out anyways. Um, and don't at me for cutting lines and stuff like that. I don't care. It's one of the things I've mentioned several times on my videos is I can say it's easy working on a race car because you end up just <laughs> ripping things out. I don't need the fuel tank. I just cut it out. If you're doing your fuel tank anyways, all these plastic lines that are around it, all the emissions crap and the breather tubes, those should all be replaced anyways. Uh, but yes, so we've got this out. Um, I did feel, spill a little bit of fuel, not a ton, but I'm going to be letting everything kind of like dry out and air out the garage a little bit before I start welding. I got a couple more plates to prep. So these three here are done and this one here. Um, I did end up finding the ends of the crack. They were basically where we thought they were. And then I just drilled right on the end of it. As I could see it starting to continue, that's where I drilled those two holes. So that won't go any further. That's the only one I'm seeing. I've looked, um, I have not really ground down into this one, but uh, the ones that I have done, these two guys, which I assume don't tear very often, this guy here, there's nothing around this one. And then I'm gonna do this one and that one next. Start removing the charcoal canister so it's out of the way, because I've got to weld back up in here. All right, so you've seen this on the channel before. I did a review of it a while back, and I believe this is, I think this is the biggest one you could do without going 220. And uh, so far it's been, it's been pretty good. It's actually welding what we're doing today nicely. My problem is that um, this creeper here does not have the tilt up, you know, that tilts your head up. So I'm really far away from it. And my visor, so this is a Chicago Electric, another Harbor Freight uh, item. It, it does really well, but it goes dark and it's like really dark. And um, it's just, it's, I'm, it's hard for me to see, but let me show you some of the penetration we're getting. It actually looks pretty good. If I, if I can keep my hands steady and keep it moving like we're supposed to, um, it's actually putting out pretty decent welds. But where I'm laying on my back getting showered and I'm kind of actually a little bit too far away from the car laying on my back. But I'll show you here real quick, kind of roughly what we're getting, I mean, for Harbor Freight Welder, come on, that's not bad. It's a little chunky over there, but 
some people glue these on. So, you know, if I left it like this, it'd be better than, I feel like just the, that spot, that spot, and this is better than gluing it. Just, that's just my opinion. Um, I am gonna essentially go 360. There's no reason not to, unless I run out of wire. I'm gonna check that actually, I'll make sure. <laughs> I might get all these tacked up so that if I run out of wire, I at least have them in the car. All right, so here is the one that was cracked, fixed. Um, it's pretty warm still. Uh, I do recommend using your lug studs. You can actually use uh, your lug studs and the taper that's on them actually helps you keep the plates like centered in the hole, which is which is really nice. So use these, they're the same thread pitch and, and size and everything. This right here, I welded up and went 360 on all the plates. So you can see all these ones are done back here. I'm gonna take my grinder now, I'm gonna flatten this out, and then this edge right here, I'll flatten out. I'll come back and get all this sprayed, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, here's the finished product. Uh, I only have one round of this undercoat, so ignore, uh, there's some spots here and there that I need to hit. On this part up here, I actually left quite a bit of the weld um, because I just wanted to leave a lot of material right there. The rest of the weld actually tucks up underneath here, so I made, it, made sure it was really thick. So yeah, everything fit really good. Very happy with the way everything has turned out. I'm not putting in the rear end in this video, so this is where we're gonna end it because I got a ton of stuff I need to do underneath the car while it's out. But yeah, very happy with it. Max Peating Rods has some fantastic stuff. I'll have my discount code right here, and I will also have the discount code in the description and in the comments. Fantastic stuff, perfect fit, welded up real nice, and honestly, that little welder from Harbor Freight is just killer. I mean, I don't know what it would cost to have somebody do this. If you have to drop the fuel tank and everything, this is a big job. And if you're willing to do it yourself, you can buy all the tools. So uh, four jack sands, two jacks, and then the welder. And if you didn't already have tools, you could buy the, all the tools for the cost of what this would be to take it to a shop. So if you're willing to do it yourself, make sure you look into that because you might end up with a welder on the other side. Because if you spend, you know, if it's $2,000 to take it to a shop, but you do it yourself, this plate kit, I can't remember how much it costs, I'll have it right here, is not very expensive. So if it's $2,000 to take it to a shop and you end up spending that $2,000 at home to do it, you could easily buy a welder and you can easily buy the jacks and the jack stands. So I really appreciate everybody so much for watching. Comments, questions down in the comment section below. Don't wait for yours to start cracking. Um, I got lucky, 400 horsepower, and I only had a single crack on this one side and I just got lucky. Don't tempt this, go get it done, whether you do it yourself and order this kit in the description or you go take it somewhere, get this done. Thanks again, we'll see everybody in the next video.